Welcome to the Nexus 2 Help Guide. In this video, we're going to show you how to build a custom VST. The Nexus 2 Auto Labeler will work best if we follow two rules when we build our VST. The first is that we have a minimum of three markers per segment. In this video, I've actually got a minimum of four markers per segment, as this will allow me to take advantage of the rigid body gap filling. And the second rule is that we don't share markers between segments. I could create a VST for the full body, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to focus on the lower body only. The first thing we have done is we have placed four marker rigid body clusters onto our subject segments. These segments are the pelvis, the thighs, the tibias, and the feet. We've also placed markers on the medial and lateral ankle and knee joints. I captured a calibration trial where my subject is first standing in the base pose. Then he moves through a range of motion where he's performing a star pattern with the hips. He flexes and extends the knees and rotates the ankle joints. He repeats the process on the other leg. Finally, he returns to the base pose. I've already loaded the trial from my data management and reconstructed it. I'm also going to load a blank subject from the resources pane, subjects tab. We can see that the subject name in the resources pane matches the subject name in the tools pane. We can also see that the subject's name in the resources pane is red. When we hover our mouse over the top of the subject's name, we get a tooltip saying that the subject has no segments. To create a segment, we need to go to the tools pane, subject prep tab, and write a segment name. In this case, I'm going to create the pelvis segment first. After I type the title in and press create, it will prompt me to select the origin marker then the primary axis marker, the secondary axis marker, and more additional markers. When I've chosen all four, I'm going to press create again. I'm going to continue the process with the remaining segments, starting with the left thigh segment all the way down to the right foot. I'm also going to be placing the knee markers in the thigh segments and the ankle markers in the tibia segments. You'll also notice that when I'm typing the segment name, I'm including the word left or right as well as the segment name, all one word. For example, left thigh. Nexus 2 will automatically designate the word left with the color red and right with the color green. Although we have finished creating our segments, the subject name is still in red. Hovering our mouse over the top tells us that the subject has unlinked segments. We have the option of linking the segments either using a ball joint, a free joint, or if we check enable advanced joint types, a hinge joint, 
or a hearty spicer joint. In this example, I'm going to use a ball joint for all joints. I've chosen to use a ball joint as opposed to a free joint to link my segments because my segments are physically adjacent to each other. The hardy spicer and hinge joints are beyond the scope of this video. When I click on link, it will prompt me to choose the parent segment, which will be a proximal segment, in this case the pelvis. It will then prompt me to pick the child segment, which will be the distal segment, in this case the left thigh. I'm going to repeat the process until all segments are linked. I press link to close the loop. Now that all segments are linked, we can see that the subject name is in black. And this is now a good point to save the VST. To do so, I'm going to right click on the subject name and save labeling skeleton as template. In this case, I'm going to call my template LB clusters. It's worth noting that I build all the segments on the same frame. In this frame, all of the segments are calibrated, and so I can link them. If I move to a different frame, the segments are no longer calibrated, and so I won't be able to link them. In the next part of this video, I'm going to show you how to change the marker properties. Nexus 2 is very flexible for these operations, and so while I present these operations in a specific order, these changes can be done in parallel. With that said, you may want to rename markers before scrubbing through your ROM trial to make checking and relabeling markers easier. Please remember to create your segments and link them on the same frame. I'm now going to go through the trial and make sure that my markers are correctly labeled. This means that if markers become unlabeled, I label them properly. If markers switch, I switch them back. To illustrate the point, I know that my two ASI markers switch. I can check this in the graph view, where I can see that there is a large jump in the y-axis, which is not accurate. And so I'm going to make sure that I fix the labeling for the remainder of the trial. Although I do have gaps, I'm not going to fill them. Now that I'm happy that my trial is properly labeled, I'm going to go to the Tools pane, Pipelines tab, and I'm going to run the Functional Skeleton Calibration Pipeline operation. You can see that Nexus has calculated the relevant joint and marker statistics necessary to auto-label this subject. We will be adding this to the template for future subjects, though its performance is optimised if the joints it shows after calibration match closely to the body. Now I'm going to go to a frame where my subject is standing in the base pose, and I'm going to run the set auto-label base pose pipeline operation. As the name suggests, it is the post that the auto-label static pipeline uses to properly identify a cloud of unlabeled markers. Up until now, we have only been optimizing the labeling for the subject. To use these joints and marker statistics for the VST, you must update the skeleton parameters and then save. I'm going to run the update skeleton parameters pipeline operation. Before I do though, I'm going to make sure that the Update Parameters button is checked under the Advanced Properties. I'm now going to overwrite the VST I had previously created 
And by right clicking on the subject name, saving the labeling skeleton as a template, and overriding the previous template. We can also change the marker names. To do so, I'm going to expand the markers list and select the first marker. I can either change the marker name in the properties or I can double click on the marker name and change the marker name appropriately. I can then press tab to proceed to the next marker and change that name accordingly too. I'm going to repeat this process till all markers are named. You can reorder the markers by right clicking on the word markers and then selecting reorder. You will then need to select the marker that you wish to reorder in the list and press move up or move down to change its position. Once you're happy with the marker order, press OK. We can set the marker status to required, where the marker has to be in both the calibration and dynamic trials, or to calibration only, where the marker is only required to be in the calibration trial, or as an optional marker, where if it's present in the calibration trial, it is treated as a required marker. If it's not present in the calibration trial, the marker is treated as a calibration only marker. By default, the first three markers on a segment are set to required, Every subsequent marker is set to optional. For my VST, I'm going to set all of the markers on the cluster to required, and those that are on the knee and ankle joints set to calibration only. You can change the color of the markers by selecting the marker and clicking on the color palette in the marker properties. You can then select a new color and press OK. You can also change the color of multiple markers at the same time by selecting the markers in question and then selecting the new color. You can change the radius of the marker by selecting the marker and then in the marker properties, increase or decrease the size of the marker by either adjusting the slider or by typing a new number. This is useful if you're using markers that are close together or very small. This only changes the visual representation of the markers on the screen. To reset it back to the default, Press the drop down menu and select set to default. We can also delete sticks between the markers by selecting the delete stick button and then selecting the stick that we want to remove. We can add sticks between markers by pressing create stick and then selecting the first and then second marker. Another feature includes the ability to add subject parameters. These aren't necessary for your labeling template, but can be stored in the VSK file. And these parameters can be referenced later if needed to perform modeling calculations. To add a subject parameter, we highlight the subject's name and then press the add parameter button. This will open up a new dialog box where we can enter a parameter name, set the parameter to required, change the unit, enter an pre-existing value or to assign a default value. When you enter a name, if you write the parameter with the word left or right all as one word, it will appear under the left or right heading in the properties list. If you don't have a left or right context, it will appear under the general heading. If you have the required box checked, the parameter will be in pink in the properties. In this example, the height and the mass are required properties, but the left and right leg lengths aren't. When a value is written in, the color reverts to the background color.
You can also see that the units are appended to the parameter name, with height being set to millimeters and mass being set to kilograms. The value is a pre-existing value that appears in the subject parameters. In this example, there was no value set for the height or mass, but the left and right leg lengths were preset to 800 millimeters. This value can be overwritten. Finally, the default value can be set by clicking on the drop down menu to the side of the parameter and selecting set to default. You can press the set all to default button and this will set all the parameters to their default values. As you can see, if no default value was set, the value reverts to zero. When I finish editing my VST, I want to make sure to save it. To do so, I again right click on the subject name and choose save labeling skeleton as template. And this time I'm going to overwrite the template I'd previously created. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at support at vicon.com.